This is the second video on moment of inertia. The topics covered are rectangular section, hollow rectangular section, eye section and channel section. A rectangular lamina is 40 mm wide and 120 mm deep. Calculate its moment of inertia with respect to A. Horizontal and vertical axis B. 40 mm side C. 120 mm side D. Horizontal axis 60 mm below bottom E. Vertical axis 20 mm away from 120 mm side F. Radius of gyration Kx and Ky. G. Modulus of section Zxx and Zyy. Now let us see how the rectangular section is. Now this is a rectangle and here this is the width 40 mm wide and this is the depth 120 mm deep. This is the depth of the rectangle. Now we first thing is we want to calculate the moment of inertia about horizontal and vertical centroidal axis. So let us see the centroidal axis. Now this is the axis xx horizontal centroidal axis. This is the vertical centroidal axis yy. Now for the axis xx for a rectangle the formula is bd cube by 12. Here B is 40 and D is 120 and it's cube divided by 12. So take the calculators in your hand and do the calculations. 40 into 120 then press the button X cube in your calculator divided by 12 is equal to you will get the answer 5.76 into 10 raised to 6 and unit is mm raised to 4. Then let us calculate the moment of inertia about the vertical centroidal axis i y y that will be d now it is d and b cube so d b cube by 12 d is 120 b is 40 its cube divided by 12 so take the calculator center and do the calculations 120 into 40 then press the button x cube divided by 12 is equal to you will get it 0 0.64 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. Then we have completed A that is moment of inertia about horizontal and vertical central axis. Now we want it about 40 mm side. Now this is the 40 mm side here. So this is the axis. Say it is AB. So let us calculate moment of inertia about axis AB. And here it will be BD cube by 3. B is 40. D is 120. It's cube divided by 3. Take the calculators in your hand and do the calculation. 40 into 120. X cube divided by 3 is equal to. You will get the answer 23.04 into 10 raised to 6. And unit is mm raised to 4. Then the next C is about 120 mm side. Now here this is a 120 mm side this vertical this dimension is 120 so this is a 120 mm side let us call this axis as cd so moment of inertia about cd that is icd will be equal to now this is a vertical axis so it will be db cube by 3 so 120 is d into 40 is the b it's cube divided by 3 so take the calculators in our hand and do the calculations 1 20 into 40 then press x cube button divide by 3 is equal to 2.56 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 this is the moment of inertia of the side cd now this c we have completed then horizontal axis 60 mm below bottom now let us draw one horizontal axis here 60 mm below bottom so here this is our axis hh horizontal axis and it's it is this distance is now 60 mm below bottom now i want moment of inertia about this horizontal axis xx how we do it to calculate this 
horizontal axis below 60 mm bottom that is i x h h will be we will be using parallel axis theorem i x x plus a h square now substitute the value of i x x from here 5.76 into 10 raised to 6 this is i x x plus now area area of this full rectangle will be 120 into 40 into now h square what is h h is the distance between the axis x x and h h between these two axes the distance is called h now from this is the central axis and it will be from xx to ab will be half of 120 that is this is 60 and from ab to hs HH, this is again 60 so from the axis hh up to the axis xx this total total distance will be 60 plus 60 and it's a square so take the calculators in your hand and do the calculations 5.76 here press the button exponential in your calculator exponential 6 plus 120 into 40 into bracket open 60 plus 60 bracket close and press x square button is equal to you'll get the answer IHH is equal to 74.88 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. This is how we have calculated the moment of inertia about the horizontal axis HH 60 mm below bottom. Now the next is vertical axis 20 mm side 20 mm vertical axis 20 mm away from 120 mm side. Now from the 120 mm side we will draw one more vertical axis at a distance of 20 mm. Now here here I am taking the axis VV and it is at a distance of here I am showing the distance it is at a distance of 20 mm from this vertical side of 120 now we want more to measure about this vertical axis VV now this VV is parallel to the axis YY now we will use the parallel axis theorem to calculate the moment of inertia about this axis VV how we do it let us see it here now vertical axis 20 mm away from 120 mm side IVV is equal to IYY plus AH square now IYY is this 0 0.64 into 10 raised to 6 so 0 0.64 into 10 raised to 6 this is the value of IYY plus area is area of the rectangle 120 into 40 into now what is the H now now here H is distance between the axis VV and YY now this total width is 40 so this yy axis will be from here to here this distance is 20 mm and again from this 120 mm side this axis vv is at 20 so distance between axis vv and yy is 20 this from here to here 20 plus from here to here another 20 20 plus 20 so that is what i have taken here 20 plus 20 in the exam you can also write directly 40 so take the calculator in your hand and do the calculations 0 0.64 here press the button exponential 6 plus 120 into 40 into bracket open 20 plus 20 bracket close then press x square button is equal to you will get IVV is equal to 8.32 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 this is the answer next what is asked is the radius of direction kx and ky now for kx the formula is under root bracket open ixx divided by a bracket close so this is equal to this is under root and this is full under root bracket open 5.76 into 10 raised to 6 this is the ixx value from here and area will be bracket open 120 into 20 now close first bracket and close second bracket how to do the calculations take the calculators in your hand press the button root button under root then bracket open 5.76 exponential 6 divided by bracket open 1 to 0 into 4 0 first bracket close second bracket close is equal to you will get answer 34.64 mm then ky is equal to under root bracket open IYY divided by A bracket close is equal to under root bracket open now KYY uh, sorry IYY is 0 0.64 into 10 raised to 6 so substitute the value from here 0 0.64 into 10 raised to 6 divided by area is bracket open 120 into 40 bracket close second bracket close 
is equal to how to do the calculations take the calculators in your hand under root bracket open 0 0.64 exponential 6 divided by bracket open 1 2 0 into 4 0 first bracket close second bracket close is equal to you will get the answer 11.54 mm then what is asked is modulus of section zxx and zyy how we do it for zxx it is ixx divided by now this is the ixx and from here the extreme distance here is it will be half of 120 so 120 by 2 total distance is 120 and this central axis is at center center of 120 so the extreme fiber here is here so that is 120 by 2 so 5.76 ixx is 5.76 exponential 6 divided by bracket open 120 divided by 2 bracket close or you can directly write it as 60 so take the calculators in your hand and do the calculations 5.76 exponential 6 divided by bracket open 120 divided by 2 bracket close is equal to you will get the answer 96 into 10 raised to 3 mm cube unit for zxx is mm cube and for kx and ky it is mm then zyy will be iyy divided by now this is the moment of inertia of the y-axis and this is the extreme fiber is here and from this to this the distance is 40 divided by 2 this full distance is 40 this is at center that is at 40 by 2 so this distance is 40 by 2 so iyy divided by b by 2 so substitute value of iyy from here 0 0.64 into 10 raised to 6 divided by 40 by 2 in bracket or you can directly write it as 20 also take the calculators in your hand and do the calculations 0 0.64 exponential 6 divided by bracket open 4 0 divided by 2 bracket close is equal to and the answer you will get is 32 point 32 into 10 raised to 3 and the unit is mm cube this is how you solve the problem Let us come to the next section. Find the MI about horizontal and vertical centroidal axis of a hollow rectangle having outer dimension 200 mm wide and 240 mm deep and the inner dimension 160 mm wide and 200 mm deep. Now this is how the hollow rectangular section will look like. The outer dimension is capital B, inner dimension and outer dimension is capital B and D. Inner dimension is small b and small d. Now the formula for mi about the horizontal axis ixx for the horizontal uh, hollow rectangular section is capital BD cube by 12 minus small BD cube by 12. If 1 upon 12 is taken common it is bracket open capital BD cube minus small BD cube bracket close divided by 12. So substitute a value ixx is equal to bracket open. Now capital B will be outer dimension the width is 20 sorry 200 and the depth is 240 so 200 into 240 cube minus inner dimension width is 160 so b is 160 and depth is 200 mm so d is small d is 200 it's cube it's cube here bracket close divided by 12 this is how you substitute the value capital bd and small bd so do the calculations take the calculators in your hand bracket open 200 into 240 press x cube button minus 160 into 200 200 x cube bracket close divided by 1 2 is equal to you will get the answer ixx is equal to 123.7 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 then then let us calculate moment of inertia about the vertical central axis i y y is equal to now here except for xx it is bd cube yy it is db cube by 12 uh, the moment of inertia of the outer rectangle capital bd cube by 12 minus moment of inertia of the inner rectangle small db cube by 12 if i take out 1 by 12 column it is bracket open capital bd cube minus small bd cube db cube capital db cube minus small db cube bracket close divided by 12 
substitute the value bracket open now capital D is 240 capital B is 200 here it is D is 240 B is 200 so D 240 B 200 it's cube minus now small D is 200 so small D 200 and small B is 160 so 160 it's cube bracket close divided by 12 this is how you substitute the value take the characters in your hand and do the calculations for here from here bracket open 240 into 200 x cube minus 200 into 160 x cube bracket close divided by 12 is equal to you will get the answer 91.73 into 10 raised to 6 and the unit is mm raised to 4 this is how you calculate the moment of inertia for a hollow rectangle about its centroidal axis xx and yy i have not shown the centroidal axis here but they are at center xx will be here and yy will be here figure is not expected i am just showing the figure for your understanding or you can just write these formulas and get the answer you can even start the formula from here only these three steps here and these three steps at the top are sufficient in the exam let us take a next question an eye section has flange width 200 mm a flange width 200 mm and flange thickness 20 mm the thickness of web is 10 mm overall depth is 300 mm calculate mi about centroidal axis now this is a eye section here and this is the flange width 200 mm and we take it as capital B this is this top rectangle is called as flange this is the top flange the bottom rectangle is also called as flange and this vertical rectangle is called as web now the vertical dimensions I am showing the thickness of the flange is 20 mm so this is 20 mm at top and bottom overall depth is 300 so this 20 uh, it, from the from here to here this total depth is 300 uh, 300 minus 20 again this minus 20 so this inner height of this web will be 260 300 minus 40 and we call this as small d now here i'm showing the thickness of the web that is 10 mm this is the thickness of the web this vertical rectangle is called as web and this 10 mm is taken as small v here thickness of web this is the axis yy and this is the axis xx xx will be here at the center and here at the center will be the y y axis now this is a uh, this total depth is 300 from here this top point to bottom so this axis axis will be from this bottom at a distance of 150 mm that is half of 300 this is the axis xx at 150 mm from this bottom or even if i take it from the top it will be 150 only this axis yy will be now this total width is 200 half of it the so from this point to this y axis this distance will be 100 mm and this is the reference point o so from o this is the centroid of the i section vertically it is at a distance of 150 mm and horizontally this distance is 100 mm from the point o and this is the centroid of i section and this is the horizontal centroidal axis xx and this is the vertical centroidal axis y y now let us see how we calculate i xx the for the I section what we do is we consider this as a full rectangle so if I consider this full rectangle and the width of the rectangle is 200 mm and the total depth of the rectangle is overall depth 300 this is taken as capital D so first I take capital BD cube by 12 that will give me the amount of inertia of this full rectangle about the axis xx from this full rectangle what I do is I consider this as a another rectangle this is one rectangle 
and this is the second rectangle so from this full rectangle of size 200 by 300 I subtract the moment of inertia of this two rectangles this second rectangle I am not showing these two rectangle just like we do it for a hollow rectangular section so the formula for IXX is capital BD cube by 12 that is this B is this and D is this full depth so capital BD cube by 12 minus now I want to minus these two rectangles hollow so what I do what is the width this width plus this width how I calculate capital B minus small b capital B minus small b capital B is 200 minus this 10 when I do I get this width plus this width so this is the hollow section whose width is capital B minus small b and the depth this is the depth of this hollow rectangle and that is 260 here and it's a cube so this is d cube by 12 so this is I am subtracting the hollow rectangle here from the outer rectangle so that what remains is this i section and I get the moment of inertia of i x x okay so this is a very simple formula capital B d cube by 12 minus bracket open capital B minus small b bracket close divided by into d cube divided by 12 capital B is width of this flange capital D is overall depth of the I section full depth of the I section so I consider this full capital B d cube by 12 minus into bracket capital B is width of flange small b is width of this web so when I do capital B minus small b I get this width of the hollow rectangle together and small d is height of this web that is 260 here substitute the values I substitute the value here ixx is equal to capital B 200 total depth is 300 it's cube divided by 12 minus capital B is 200 small b is width of this web that is 10 so 200 minus 10 into small d is this 260 height of the web so two or depth of the web 260 cube divided by 12 and when you take the calculators in your hand and do the calculations 200 into 300 x cube divided by 12 minus bracket open 200 minus 10 bracket close into 260 x cube divided by 12 is equal to you will get the answer 171.71 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 this is ixx how we calculate iyy for calculating iyy we consider this rectangle each rectangle separately and calculate its amount of inertia about the y axis that is db cube by 12 and do the addition we get iyy iyy is equal to now for the first rectangle it is d1 b1 cube by 12 for the second one d2 b2 cube by 12 and for the third rectangle it is d3 b3 cube by 12 and add all these three together we get iyy for the rec first rectangle d is 20 b is 200 so 20 into 200 cube divided by 12 for this b is this 10 and d is 260 so d is 260 b is 10 for this web that is the second rectangle so 260 into 10 cube divided by 12 for the third now top and bottom flanges are same have the same size so it, d is 20 and b is 200 so 20 into 200 cube divided by 12 this is iyy take the calculators in your hand and do the calculation 20 into 200 x cube divided by 12 plus 260 into 10 x cube divided by 12 plus 20 into 200 200 x cube divided by 12 is equal to you will get the answer iyy is equal to 26.688 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 this is how you calculate the moment of inertia of a symmetrical I section symmetrical I section means top flange and bottom flange have same dimension if top flange and bottom flange have same dimension then only you can use this formula and this formula and calculate IXX and IYY
channel section has flanges 200 mm wide and 20 mm thick the thickness of fab is 20 mm overall depth is 400 mm calculate mi about the centroidal axis so here this is the channel section this is the top rectangle this is uh, vertical rectangle and bottom rectangle these top and bottom rectangles are called flanges and this vertical rectangle is called web now the flange width is 200 mm this is the width of the flange which i am showing here and that we call it capital b 200 mm this is the width of the flange 200 mm wide and now here i am showing the thickness of the flange this is the thickness here is one thickness and here is another thickness and that is 20 mm now overall depth given is 400 mm so this depth will be 400 minus 20 minus 20 that is 360 mm and we call it small d now how we first let us calculate the moment of inertia about the horizontal centroidal axis now how the total depth is this is the overall depth 400 here I'm showing then the thickness of the web given is 20 mm this is the thickness of the web which we call it small b thickness of the web is called small b and depth of this web is called small d that is 360 and the total depth from here to here is called capital D that is 400 now let us see However, the horizontal axis xx, this is the horizontal centroidal axis xx I am showing. Now, if this total depth is 400, then from the bottom up to the axis xx, it will be half of 400 because this channel section is symmetrical about the axis xx. Symmetrical means if I take a paper and cut a C section with dimensions channel section like this, and if at center of this 400 that is at 200 from here to here I bend the channel section then it exactly matches and fits one above the other so it is symmetrical about the axis xx so from bottom up to the axis xx this distance will be 200 that is half of this total depth 400 this is the point O and from this O this axis xx is at a distance of 200 mm now how we calculate moment of inertia about the horizontal axis xx what we do is I consider this full as a rectangle and so the outer dimension will be capital B 200 and capital D 400 so BD cube by 12 will give me the moment of inertia of this full rectangle and from this full rectangle I deduct this hollow rectangle just like we do it for a hollow rectangular section this is a rectangle which I'm showing by the green this rectangle I deduct from this full rectangle so what remains is the channel so now for deducting this inner rectangle this is the width and how much it will be now this width will be capital B minus this B this will give me the width of this hollow section capital B is width of flange and small b is width of the web so when I do capital B minus small b I get this distance that is the width of this hollow rectangle so this is capital B minus small b and what is the depth for this rectangle this is small d so small d cube so bracket open capital B minus small b into small d cube by 12 will give me the top inertia of this hollow rectangle about the axis xx so this is the formula which we use to calculate the moment of inertia of a channel section about the axis xx capital B d cube by 12 minus bracket open capital B minus small b bracket close into small d cube by 12 now let us substitute the values capital B is this 200 width of flange capital D is total depth of the channel that is 400 cube divided by 12 capital B d cube by 12 then minus 
capital B is 200, small b is this width of width that is 20 into d is this, this is the height or depth of this width 360. So this is the 360 cube divided by 12. Now take the calculators in our hand and do the calculations. 200 into 400 press the button x cube divided by 12 minus bracket open 200 minus 20 bracket close into 360 x cube divided by 12 is equal to you will get the answer 366.83 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. Now the same channel we are taking here. Now I am showing the dimensions. Width is this is the width 200, this is the thickness of the flange 20, this is the depth of the web 300 and this is 20 is this thickness of this bottom flange now this is i'm showing the thickness of this web as 20 mm it is the same channel now we are calculating the amount of inertia over the y now this figure here if i draw a vertical line anywhere and i fold it on this side there is no rectangle so so it is not symmetrical about the y axis so first i have to calculate what is the x bar where is the y axis so for that i have taken this vv axis as a reference axis and what we do is we split this channel section in three rectangles top rectangle this web and this is the bottom rectangle and we calculate x1 for this top then x2 and x3 so how we do it how we calculate x bar now this is the center for top rectangle and this is the vertical axis of this top rectangle and this will from this axis we we up to the center of this is x1 and how much is this x1? x1 will be half of 200. This center of this rectangle will be at center of this 200. So x1 will be half of 200 that, that is 100. Now for this web, centroid will be somewhere here. And this is the vertical axis, centroidal vertical axis for the web. Now from the axis y, y, what will be the distance x2 now if i show this distance from this point to this this is x2 now the thickness of the web is 20 so it will be from here to here will be half of 20 that is 10 on this side it is 10 and this side it is 10 this is a center line so x2 here is this distance is 10 and This is my axis yy which I am showing here. Is This axis yy is the centroidal axis of this channel, full channel. And this vertical line I am showing it, that is the centroidal axis of this web. This vertical line which I am showing, this is the centroidal ax vertical centroidal axis of this top flange. And this distance is x1 for the top flange and this is the x2 for the web now let us calculate x bar x bar will be equal to a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3 full thing in bracket divided by bracket open a1 plus a2 plus a3 bracket close substitute the values let us substitute now x1 will be b by 2 capital b is this is 200 is capital 2 and from here to here this distance is x1 and it will be b by 2 that is 200 by 2 is equal to 100 mm similarly it will be same for the bottom because this width is also 200 and this depth is 20 so x3 also will be b by 2 that is 200 by 2 is equal to 100 mm for this bottom rectangle and x2 for this web is this 
thickness is 20 which I am showing here 20 mm and it will be half of 20 the center will be here from this reference axis up to this end point will be x2 and that will be b by 2 that is 20 by 2 10 mm so, so let us substitute the values of x1 x2 x3 and a1 a2 a3 in this formula and to calculate the x bar so x bar will be now this top flange area will be 200 into 20 so 200 into 20 and x1 is 100 which we have already seen here this web the dimension is here 360 and 20 so 20 into 360 and x2 is 10 mm which i am showing here from here to here this is the central axis and from this distance will be 10 again from this bottom area it's same 200 into 20 and x3 is also same that is 100 as x1 so take the and divided by a1 is 200 into 20 into 2 i am doing because i am taking a1 and a3 together so into 2 and a2 will be this is the web area 360 into 20 that is a2 360 into 20 so let us do the calculations here Cal take the calculators in our hand bracket open 200 into 20 into 100 plus 20 into 360 into 10 plus 200 into 20 into 100 bracket close divided by bracket open 200 into 20 into 2 plus 360 into 20 bracket close is equal to you will get x bar is equal to 57.3 sorry 57.4 which are done rounding you may get it as 36 or 38 something like that so x bar is equal to 57.4 mm now we have got this as our x axis and this from this reference axis this x bar is 57.4 and this distance is 57.4 from the vertical axis vv to the vertical axis yy and this shows the position of my yy axis for this channel section so this is how we first calculate x bar and decide where is the y axis for the channel view how to calculate x bar for the channel section now what we do is we know the moment of inertia of this top flange about its centroidal axis so this vertical axis is its centroidal axis of the top and what is the moment of inertia it is d into b cube divided by 12 from this vertical axis i transfer the moment of inertia to the axis y y here so i use parallel axis theorem so db cube by 12 plus i have to do a h square where h is the distance between this vertical centroidal axis to this y y axis this is the h2 which i am showing here this distance from that is h2 now how we calculate h2 now from y uh, this axis vv up to yy is x bar and from this axis vv up to this centroid is x1 so from vv to this is x bar and from here to here is x1 so this h1 will be x1 minus h bar similarly for this rectangle what i do is i know the moment of inertia of this vertical rectangle about its vertical this is the vertical centroidal axis so i know the moment of inertia about this vertical centroidal axis and that will be d2 into b2 cube by 12 okay plus i have to do a h2 square now what is h2 now i have to transfer the moment of inertia from this vertical axis to this vertical axis y y so from this y y up to this axis so this axis and this y y this distance is h2 now this full distance from vv is x bar and from vv up to the centroid this distance is this is x2 so h2 will be x bar minus x2 i get this distance h2 x bar minus this x2 when i do 
I get this H2. So the formula here is IYY is equal to D1 B1 cube by 12 plus A1 H1 square plus D2 B2 cube by 12 plus A2 H2 square plus D3 B3 cube by 12 plus A3 H3 square. Now what is D1? D1 is this depth 20. B1 is this width for the top rectangle. So that is 200. It's cube divided by 12. A1 area is area of this rectangle that is 200 by 20 so 200 into 20 and now what is H1? H1 is X1 minus X bar. So X1 is here you can see it is 100 and X bar is 57.4 so 100 minus 57.4 bracket square so X1 minus x bar this from here to here is x1 and from this point to this point this is here x bar so from here to here is x bar from here to here is x1 so x1 minus x bar will give me this distance this is small distance h1 which I am showing here so this is h1 and top and bottom flanges are same so if I put full bracket to this and make multiply by 2 I get this full figure d3 b3 cube by 12 plus a3 h3 cube because everything is same it is repetition so I multi keep this full thing in this bracket and multiply it by 2 then d2 b2 cube d2 this is d2 that is 360 for this second vertical rectangle 360 B is 20 so 360 into 20 cube divided by 12 plus area is 360 into 20 into bracket open now this H2 is the distance between this axis of the second rectangle and axis YY this distance is H2 that is 57.4 and H2 is X2 is 10 so minus 10 and full bracket square this is 57.4 minus 10 is this distance h2 here and it's square so this is how we substitute your value now take the calculators in your hand and start calculating from here bracket open 20 into 200 x cube divided by 12 plus 200 into 20 into bracket open 100 minus 57.4 bracket close x square second bracket close into 2 plus 360 into 20 cube divided by 12 plus 360 into 20 into bracket open 57.4 minus 10 bracket close x square is equal to check what is the answer you are getting you will get the answer iyy is equal to 57.62 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 this is how we calculate the moment of inertia for a channel section for a channel section when you calculate moment of inertia by the y axis see to it that you have to first calculate x bar and then use the parallel axis theorem and this h1 is always the difference between x bar and x1 h2 is always the difference between x bar and x2 and h3 is always the distance between x3 and x bar so this is the how you substitute the value of h1 h2 and h3 and you can write anything even if you write here 57 minus 100 this negative figure when you make it square it becomes positive but it is always better that you take a bigger values first and then the smaller value while calculating h1 h2 this here is one assignment i'm giving assignment number 14 question number one a rectangular lamina is 50 mm wide and 200 mm deep calculate its moment of inertia with respect to 
A horizontal and vertical centroidal axis B 50 mm side C 200 mm side D horizontal axis 50 mm below bottom E vertical axis 25 mm away from 200 mm side radius of gyration Kx and Ky modulus of section Zxx and Zyy it is very parallel to the question 1 which we have taken question number 2 find the MI about the horizontal and vertical centroidal axis of a hollow rectangle having outer dimension 300 mm wide and 400 mm deep inner dimensions 150 mm wide and 200 mm deep. 200 mm deep question number 3 an I section has flange width 250 mm and flange thickness 20 mm the thickness of web is 20 mm overall depth is 340 mm calculate mi about the centroidal axis question number four a channel section has flanges 300 mm wide and thickness 20 mm the thickness of the web is 20 mm overall depth is 500 mm calculate mi about the centroidal axis try to solve these problems they are very similar to the problems which are solved above. be a master thank you